Hi everyone, this is Dr. Dan Haupt. I'm uh, coming to you from my old farmhouse in Duro, Ontario. Before I get started, I'd like to thank my son Sam, who's doing all the filming and the production and the post-production, and my son Aaron, who's gonna be doing the lion taming section of this video. So th this, this video uh, is all about vaccines and a little bit of immunology. I'm coming to you from my parlor in an old farmhouse. The farmhouse is about 110, 120 years old. And the reason why it's important I'm doing it from the parlor is because this is the place that over the last century, people who had died and were waiting for burial would have been placed such that their relatives could come and visit them. Maybe they'd have a wake here. So it's a little bit spooky. And sometimes late at night when I'm playing my guitar in the parlor, I think I can I can hear the voices of the dead coming through. Anyway, just down the road from me in Duro is an old graveyard. And if you go to some of the old gravestones, you can see people, children, that had died prematurely. And most of them had died of infectious disease. Things like diphtheria, polio, tetanus, measles, mumps, rubella, things that we don't even see. As a family doctor, I've never seen a case of measles. Now, why is that? That's because we vaccinate people. And I wanna tell you about the worst infectious disease known to man and woman, and that's smallpox. Smallpox over the centuries has killed upwards of 500 million people, it used to ravage populations. It's considered, I believe, the, the deadliest infectious agent ever, ever seen. And its mortality rate was 30 to 40%, which means if you got it, you were pretty likely to die. Now the earliest therapy against smallpox was something called variolation, where they exposed people to small amounts of smallpox. Sometimes they'd powder smallpox and have them snorted up their nose. Then uh, a guy named Edward Jenner, he was a, a British physician in 1796, he observed something really interesting. He noticed that the milkmaids, the, the women that would milk the cows, they would get mild cases of something called cowpox, and the cowpox seemed to protect them against smallpox. So he did something very interesting, which would not be allowed today. And I'm gonna demonstrate it to you. He inoculated his eight-year-old gardener's son with cowpox. So Aaron, we're just gonna inoculate you with some cowpox. Poor old Aaron, he got a case of cowpox, which made him kind of sick a couple of weeks later. Anyway, two months later, Edward Jenner actually exposed James Phipps to the actual smallpox virus. He gave him smallpox and he, he lived, he survived. In fact, if he got smallpox at all, he got a very, very mild case. And he realized, aha, this is the way we can protect people. So the earliest vaccines we're actually giving people a different virus, which is very, very similar to smallpox, and it protected them. And that was the general idea of the vaccine for a couple of hundred years. When we talk about a vaccine, V-A-C-C-I-N-E, vaccine actually comes from the word vaca, which means cow, or in French, vache. So vaccine comes from cow, because we gave people cowpox. Now you gotta understand something about viruses. All viruses want to do is reproduce. They don't care, they don't want to kill necessarily. They don't even care if they make people sick. They just want to reproduce, much like many people I know. The problem with viruses is they can't reproduce by themselves. They need a host. They need somebody else to do the reproductive business for them. So all viruses are is a little bit of information in the form of ribonucleic acid, RNA, surrounded by a little bit of fat, lipid, surrounded by a protein coat. And that's all a virus is. What they need to do is they have to insert their genetic material into somebody else's cells and use their genetic material to reproduce. Anyway, that's what viruses are. Now, as a family doctor in Lakefield, I give lots and lots of vaccine. I immunize against measles and mumps and rubella and tetanus and pneumococcus and chicken pox and seasonal flu. And there's different types of vaccines. Some vaccines we inject dead organism. So we kill 
the virus and we inject people with this dead organism and your body mounts an immune response. It figures out what's wrong, it says this dead stuff is foreign to me and it mounts an immune response and develops antibodies. The next time you get exposed to that, that virus, you've already got your protection on board. Sometimes we weaken a virus. So we'll take a virus and we'll expose them to radiation or to poison and we'll weaken that virus such that it can't cause bad disease. Might give you a mild case of something. And then we inject that. Or sometimes in the case of influenza, we break the influenza down to component proteins and we'll inject you with different proteins from the influenza and your body mounts an immune response to that. Now, I want to tell you about this new messenger RNA vaccine that's being made by Pfizer and Moderna. Messenger RNA uh, is, is all it is is information. But if I were to get messenger RNA and inject you with it, your body would immediately recognize it. Could you please go get it? No, no, the, the, the kitty. <laughs> now, if I inject messenger RNA into your body without protection, that messenger RNA is immediately scooped up. So just pretend that Zoe over here is our immune system and says, oh, kitty treats. And it goes after and eats the kitty treats. Of course, she just woke up. Okay. But if you take that messenger RNA and you put it into a protective coat, in this case, it's a lipid nanoparticle. It's a little, little particle of fat. And you put the messenger RNA into that little particle of fat and then inject into your body, it's protected from your immune system. And then this information goes into your body and it tells your ribosome, make protein, make protein. And then your ribosome, that's, it's its job to make protein and it spits out the protein. Okay, it made spike protein. And the spike protein is what allows the virus to get into your cell in the first place. So here's the virus and here's your spike protein and this is what allows the virus to get into your cell. But your muscle cells have made all this spike protein and the immune system, which would be my kitty, if my kitty wasn't half asleep, the immune system says, wait a second, I've seen that spike protein before. And it mounts an immune response and it neutralizes not just the spike protein, but the entire virus. And that's basically how the messenger RNA vaccine works. Now, there are a number of issues with this, with this new vaccine. One is the cold chain that needs to be uh, kept in place. So for instance, the Pfizer vaccine needs to be kept at minus 70 degrees. And many people don't have freezers that keep things at minus 70 degrees. The Moderna vaccine needs to be kept frozen, uh, but, but not at minus 70. And I believe the Oxford AstraZeneca just needs basic, uh, good quality uh, freezing and refrigeration. The distribution of the vaccine has become really, really important. And right now we're just waiting for the vaccine. The question is, who is gonna get the vaccine first? And Canada in its wisdom has chosen to immunize people at uh, senior residences, at retirement residences, and people who work with those, those elderly folk. Very important with both vaccines that you need to have two doses to get your immune system up and the two doses have to be given approximately 21 days apart, apparently up to 42 days apart. A number of people have asked about allergy to this vaccine and there have been a number of cases of anaphylaxis, which is severe allergy. No one has died of anaphylaxis, but that's certainly a major issue. And if people have concerns, they should talk to their family doctor. Anyway, I am waiting with bated breath to, uh, to be able to get the vaccine myself and more importantly, to give it to my 1500 patients as quickly as possible. I'm hoping to do a live event where people can ask me questions, but in the meantime, please keep your head down, stay away from people, stay at home, wear your masks. Let's just hold our breath until we, uh, until we get the vaccine. Thanks very much, Dr. Dan from Duro signing off. Take care, bye-bye.